everybody and welcome to a different Metroid experience. This is Metroid the Other M. A game that I feel is extremely, and I over constantly will be saying, extremely, I cannot understand that, of being underrated of all the Metroid games. Um, we will be getting to exactly what people say about this game and why I think it's not true for the game. Let's get started. Uh, I can turn on subtitles just in case. still alive. The baby. Time to go. Okay, Samus. Everything's normal. I awoke to the familiar voice of a quarantine officer. Let's try sitting up, huh? Slowly now. A dream. I had been reliving the tragic moments of my recent past. Thanks to the hyperbeam, which was given to me somehow by the baby, I laid Mother Brain to waste. An explosion that followed destroyed Planet Z along with the remains of Mother Brain, the Space Pirates, and my long-standing nemesis, Ridley, and the baby. Come on, Samus. Let's go next door.
for a quick test, Samus? Let's start with a little warm-up. Try a charge beam for me. So as you can see, the gameplay is significantly different. We are... sort of a top-down, third-person, fourth-person, whatever you want to call it, perspective. And we have this sort of shtick. I actually really love this gameplay. I think it really suits Metroid. Try a charge beam. To either be... Sharp looking charge beam. Just the way I like it. It suits Metroid to either be top, um, 2D or this. And that's one of the reasons why I have issues with... Um, like, I've never tried... From there, kick climb to work your way up. Just like that, Samus. Let's invite some of your pals. That and there is an auto-aim feature, which is also pretty nice. Concentration to replenish your missile supply. You haven't forgotten, have you? Use concentration to replenish your missile supply. Oops, I had... Okay. I didn't see the A button there for some reason. Say hello with a missile. Ah, the pit space pirate. Man, I always feel so satisfying to get those off. How about you try using a power button? Sorry as well for a Don't hold back. Allow adequate room around you during power bomb play. Alright, Samus. That's it for the test. Looks like you took quite a bit of damage. It's unbelievable how well you've held up. I wondered if this too was a result of the power the baby gave me. Right, you're doing the meeting room. The big dogs are waiting. I gave your suit a pop so you'd be at least somewhat presentable. Not even a 
fragment. None of the baby remained on me. I knew it to be true, but still couldn't help looking at my palm for a sign. Never again would I encounter the baby. Never. The finality of it struck me once again. Mission completed. The planet Zebes was annihilated, and all Metroids were exterminated. A simple report, almost dull even, but it felt momentous to me. I don't know how much time passed since then. Days went by in their quiet way and people's recollections of Metroids and space pirates grew nebulous over time, relegated to a past concern of the galactic communities. Nothing more than a faded memory. Codename Baby's Cry. A common SOS with the urgency of a baby crying. The nickname comes from the fact that the purpose of the signal is to draw attention. The signal was coming from a remote part of space. I altered the course of my ship as if this detour had already been part of my flight plan. Baby's cry. It was as though it was crying specifically for me. And the game wants us to look at something right away. Galactic Federation. Huh? And as we know from Metroid Fusion, they're kind of bad news. Um, so we're starting off the game now. I'd like to note, I believe we can go back to the ship just like always and recover stuff. And I believe we can also save it. Yep. Same as always. Just want to get that out of the way. So, this game, if you're wondering about the plotline and all of its glory of which game it comes after, it is directly after Super. As you can tell, kind of from the plot. They kind of ignore most of the things that happen in Zero Mission, despite calling it remade uh, Super... Met or Metroid Super? Or Super Metroid? Um... And this is directly before Fusion. If that's where you want to know for the plot. So that is where we are at. 
I want to say it's been about a year for the uh since Metroid Super or Super Metroid. Remember me? Anthony. There's only one person who calls me princess. And that person is Anthony Higgs of the Galactic Federation Army. Haven't seen you since that last mission. Hey, and your buddy's here too. Adam Malkovich. A general in the Galactic Federation Army. Not only a trusted confidant, but also my former superior officer. Yes, there was a time when I was enrolled in the Galactic Federation Army. And then I, well, I was young and inexperienced. As the result of a certain incident, I left Adam's command and set out on my path as a solitary bounty hunter. What are you doing here? The first words out of his mouth were typical coming from Adam. To answer his question, I recounted the details of what had brought me to this place, and then I asked what circumstances led the Federation here. That information is not for an outsider. The word he so obviously chose, outsider, pierced my heart. Commander, we're all prepped. Ah, no dice. I think our only option is to use the laser to slowly burn our way through. This is gonna take a while. The electrical system here is out, and we can't get the barrier wall to open. We tried using explosives, but it's tricky to pull off without collateral damage. What we need is some way to focus the power onto one centralized location. It calls for explosives. Adam hadn't authorized it, but I decided to remain on site for the sake of the others. This also explains a lot of, um... stuff. And also, I kinda like the fact that, you know, Samus not wanting to choosing not to use her missiles or bombs instead of just having them taken away every single time you start a new Metroid game, um, for some reason. Ow, my face. But you can see a lot of where she uh, gets from Metroid Fusion to Metroid, uh, to, well, from Super Metroid to Metroid Fusion and this game in between. Alright, I have to, um, do this. Get an exact shot. You have to fill it up, basically. And then it, uh, turns on. If you're wondering what that, um, blinking blue light is, that means that there's an item in the area. Whether or not we can actually get that item, I'm not quite sure. Also, unlike the predecessors of the previous incarnations of 
Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion. There is not a single point in this game that will force you to, um... beat the game or else, basically. Basically, you won't get locked out of any area um, towards the end of the game. Alright, just take these guys out. You can also defend yourself and use some actual com combative moves. You start off with jump ball, you start off with um, your regular long beam attacks and all that. I believe you also have the ability to climb up stuff. And wall jumping is made super easy with a lot of the new uh, mechanics, which is really nice. As soon as you kill all the enemies in an area, which finally killing all of the enemies in an area is actually worth something. Um, once you kill all the enemies in an area, you will actually get um, to see where exactly something is if you need to use it. Like, or not need to use it, um, to find an item. You can actually, um, and also you have to kill the enemies in the area to open the doors as well, for the first time. Kind of standard with some, uh, of the other Metroid games. I also have creepy bathrooms. If I'm not mistaken, if you go first person... On one of these things, you can actually open the door. I don't know what button it is. It's been a long time. There is one that actually has an item behind it, just saying. But it is creepy that it goes up to that form of the game and the creepy music. <sighs> Bad stuff always happens in bathrooms, man. So yes, there is quite a lot of um, intricate details in this game in particular. Um, things I really like that they change for the better in this game. And things that make sense after you... Like, the entirety of Metroid Fusion will make sense after you play this game or see this game or whatever you want to do. Um... Beat him up. We can't really do much until we get authorized for bombs. Like, there's this thing up here, but I think we need bombs for that. I think if it's shining red, then that means you can't get it unless you have, uh, something. But if it's blue, then you can get it. Yeah, can't get that. Also, I like seeing emotion in characters. I don't like watching boards. So it's nice to see Samus actually have emotion and not be a robot. With a one-track mind abounding, I think. Ow. But there are a lot of hidden items in this game, and it's pretty satisfying to actually find them all. We have to kill all the enemies here. Okay. That and I really like the platforming in this game. I think it's really nice and really smooth. Okay. That's so our map. I honestly think this game would probably remind a lot of people of, um... Uh, Super Metroid. Navigation booth. You can stand on this platform? To save, heal, and all that other good stuff. Which is really nice. 
Some of bugs going around. He's dead. Someone or something attacked him. It was obvious that there was some pervasive danger throughout the facility. I didn't know what had brought Adam here, but I did know that cooperation was imperative if we were to restore safety. Adam, listen to me. Clearly this facility is in complete disorder. It might be too dangerous for your men to go alone. That's why I've... The first boss of the game. Ow. Ow. I keep forgetting to dodge. Hmm. Might take me a minute, it's been a long while since I did this boss. Normal missile. What you want to do is wait till that thing Come on. On, buddy. Ow. And now it's going to start trying to attack you with its face. Kill the boss.
Samus, looks like I'm gonna need to ask for your cooperation on this mission, but I'm also gonna have to ask that you follow my commands. You don't move unless I say so, and you don't fire until I say so. Any objections, lady? The thumbs up sign had been used by the Galactic Federation for ages. Me? I was known for giving the thumbs down during briefing. I had my reasons, though. Commander Adam Malkovich was normally cool and not one to joke around. But, but he would end all of his mission briefings by saying, Any objections, lady? He was joking, but others weren't. At the time, I felt surrounded by people who treated me like a child, or used kid gloves because I was a woman. And yet with Adam, I was grateful for the nod. My past has left me with an uneasy soul. And as a result, it touched me on some level that Adam would acknowledge that past by calling me something delicate, like Lady. And I knew more than anyone that every word from Adam was deliberate. My thumbs down was a twofold response. A sign of derision at being called a lady, and a signal of my complete understanding of the mission orders. The other soldiers were always willing to support me with easy smiles despite the fact that I clearly had so much yet to learn. Among them was Anthony. In the face of his well-meaning behavior and that of the other soldiers, my response was to become increasingly bitter. I was a child, always with something to prove, a chip on my shoulder. And I was angry. I felt that if I let my guard down, I would easily be broken. And beyond that, I was scared. But even in the naivete of my youth, I could see in Adam's joking manner how close he felt to me. Adam knows my past, and he knows me better than anyone else. Confession time. Because I was so young when I lost both of my parents, there's no question I saw Adam as a father figure. When I rebelled against him, I knew I could get away with it. And his paternal compassion in the face of my rebellion reinforced the special bond I felt with him. I understood well that chances were slim that I would ever find anyone that understood me like Adam. And yet, when the time came, I still left his side. I was so young. Young and naive. Exactly what transpired here on the battleship is still uncertain. Here's what we do know. The equipment we thought had been destroyed is operational again. And we've seen casualties attributed to an unidentified and lethal creature. The situation is critical. We need to gather all the information we can, but priority one is to find any survivors and bring them to safety. Consider this site extremely dangerous careful as you make your sweeps. And there's one problem. The wireless interference in this facility is all pervasive. Your comm systems are useless. As a result, communication channels will be limited to the facility's navigation booths. Well then, Lyle, investigate Sector 1 and show a little restraint with the explosives. Gotcha. Maurice, you cover Sector 2. Repair any equipment you come across. Affirmative. Anthony, you're Sector 3. I'll leave it to you to decide whether plasma guns are called for. All right. James, check out the control bridge. Our communication issues might be the result of electrical interference. Yes, sir. And KG, run a complete sweep of the residential quarters and investigate any trace of survivors. Got it. Each of you is authorized to use a freeze gun. 
Do not forget to check in regularly via navigation booths. And Samus, you go to the system management room. Do everything you can to get the electrical system back up and running. Looks like your comm system is still functional. Remember, everything you see will also appear on this screen. Regarding auxiliary weapons, the use of bombs has been authorized. As far as your other weapons go, we will continue to investigate and authorize use as we can. However, we currently have no plans to authorize the use of power bombs. As you know, they have the ability to spread a high temperature heat wave over a large area, impacting living things, which is a nice way of saying they can vaporize humans instantly. You should be well aware of how dangerous power bombs are and how their devastation can't be obstructed with common materials. Once the mission in the system management room is complete, I need you to report back. I'll give you your next orders then. I want you all to be especially careful as you execute your missions. That's the end of the briefing. It was the first joint mission I'd been a part of since becoming a freelance bounty hunter. And of course, it was the first time since my Federation days that I was following the orders of a commanding officer. Having received mission orders from Adam, I felt confused and strangely exhilarated at the unexpected turn of events. I responded. Understood, Adam. No objections, of course. And with that, we beat this first, first part of the game for the first episode. Samus, head for the system In the next episode, room. we'll be continuing on. See you guys then.